find it difficult to understand how you can communicate how you feel and what you're thinking. I mean, that can be difficult at the best of times, can't it, in this busy world? But actually, with all the thoughts and the feelings and the sensations we experience through grief, that can be difficult for us to try and process and put into language. So first off, be, com be comforted to as much as you can be that that's a normal experience. And in fact, what we find is that when people contact us and they're finding it difficult, for instance, to function in work because they've been bereaved, often people talk about having difficulties in concentrating and working out things in a, in a sort of systematic way. That once again is normal and that's because our grief is taking up the capacity we've got to think and to feel. A lot's going on for us internally. So what we advise then is first off to make sure that you've got some time to be with yourself, to be with those that you trust and that, who love you so that you can process that a bit and understand a little bit about how you can communicate and what you need to. So for some journaling can be really helpful to be able to write things down day to day, what might you might be experiencing, how you might be going through that and also to be able to look at that over time to see the differences and the changes because our feelings and thoughts do change over time and we do come back to things as well. Sometimes to write to the person who has died um, and what that means is really to, to put your thoughts and feelings about what's happened and about them on paper. For some people they prefer to keep that with them and to, to, to make sure that those are held close. Other people would prefer to, to put that aside and destroy that and say actually that's, that's, that's done now, I've, I've moved into a different place and, and then I need to perhaps write in another way. For some people though, what's really important is to, and actually for, for many people, it's really important to remember, to remember the person who's died and that can be done in a number of ways. So what we find commonly working with children is we'll make things like memory trees with them where we'll stick post-it notes or pieces of paper or small pieces of, of wood that they've written on onto a, onto a tree design or onto a wall that are memories of the person who's died. You can also do that with memory jars where you might put notes of memories in the jars and then pull them out and think about them and talk about them. And to remember things, sometimes with tears, sometimes with laughter about the person who's died and how we've shared our time with them. And that remembering is so important too because it helps our brains work through the, the, that memory and that someone isn't there bodily with us anymore, but they are with us in memory.